Hello all, I'm going to give a brief overview of the MSI testing. MSI is nothing but microsatellite instability testing. And before going on to discuss the testing and the methodologies, few a brush or overview of genetics is essential. So what are microsatellites? Microsatellites are just short tandem repeats of repetitive DNA sequences, as you can see here. So these are short repeats. You can see CA repeats over here. Right. So these are the short tandems which are repeated and they might be up to 2 to 10 nucleotides base pairs. So here are a few base pairs of these repeats. Microsatellite pathway, this microsatellite instability which I will be discussing. What is microsatellite instability? This is one of the pathways implicated in colorectal carcinomas and also endometrial carcinomas. So yes, we saw that these are short repeats and they um, come over and over again. The thing is, these short repeats, they are very much prone to mutation. So when they are very much prone to mutation, one of these base pairs may be changed by another base pair. When this happens, there are certain genes which come in to repair this base pair mismatch. And these genes are known as the mismatch repair genes, also known as the MMR genes. So what are these genes? These genes are MSH2, MLH1, PMS2 and MSH6. As you can see here, MSH2 and MSH6, they come in a pair. MSH2, as you can see here, is paired either with MSH6 or MSH3. And MSH1 and PMS2 come in a pair. There's the reason I'm telling you this, which I'll be discussing. And once the mismatch is recognized, then the mismatch is recognized by MSH2 and uh, MSH6 pair. And then MLH1, PMS2 is recruited and they together synthesize new DNA and correct it. Okay. So, when this process does not happen, when one of these genes is lost, mismatch repair is deficient. So, when mismatch repair is deficient, that is when you get the terminology DMMR, which is also known as deficient MMR, which is seen in these colorectal carcinomas. Okay, so this is clear. Now, for all practical purposes in IHC, when we test these in IHC, so we have IHCs for all four of them, MLH1, PMS2, MSH6, as well as MSH2. So, when you see that uh, tumor cell, this is a tumor cell, when a tumor cell shows loss of staining, that means that there is loss of the particular gene, okay. When th the staining is present, it means the gene is intact and there is no uh, loss. So, when you have uh, all, all four IHCs present, that is you have MLH1 positive, PMS2 positive and you have MSH6 also positive and MSH2 also positive. That means that the tumor is not MS uh, microsatellite instable, but instead it is a microsatellite stable tumor you're looking at and you do not have any deficient MMR in that case. Okay. Now, how to go ahead and test for a uh, MMR? In IHC, if you see loss of expression of MLS, ML, MLH1 and PMS2, see that is why you can see that there is a Pairing over here. As we saw earlier, that MLH1 almost always pairs with PMS2. Okay, so that is the reason why this is important. In IHC also, when MLH2 one is lost, PMS2 may also be lost in those cases. So if that is the case, then BRAF mutational analysis should be done. If you see BRAF mutation, then Lin syndrome is unlikely. Okay, Lin syndrome is a hereditary syndrome, it's a hereditary non-polyposis colorectal carcinoma syndrome okay in this syndrome usually uh, you have uh, any of the germline mutant genes in either msh2 uh, pms2 or uh, even you might have msh6 okay usually mlh1 is the least common gene involved in hereditary syndromes like the lynch syndrome so when you see that mlh1 and pms2 is lost the next best step is to do a BRAF mutational anal analysis because this is less likely to be a Lynch syndrome or a uh, hereditary syndrome. Instead, it could be a sporadic condition which we are dealing with. Okay, so in sporadic cases, the next best step to do is a BRAF analysis. And if BRAF mutation is present, then Lynch syndrome is unlikely, then this is definitely a sporadic case and treatment can be given accordingly. If this is not there, then the next step is to do a MLH1 promo promoter methylation analysis. Now, I'll be discussing what a promoter methylation is in a short while. So, if promoter methylation is present, again, this signifies that we're dealing with a sporadic tumor and there's no germline mutation. If there is no germline mutation, then even in some a few cases where you will find only MLH1 and PMS2 expression, you might find 
germline mutations as well. So in that case, it might still be a Lynch syndrome. Again, the possibility is very low. But if you see there is a loss of MSH2, MSH6 and BMS2 expression, then the next best step, step is to do a germline MMR gene analysis by PCR. And if, you, if there is a pathogenic variant in, in either of these, then could be a Lynch syndrome. Okay. So there is another one, a unique syndrome, a unique condition which is known as Lynch like syndrome, where you will have all the features of Lynch syndrome. You will have all the tumors, you will have ovarian carcinoma, endometrial carcinomas, and you might have colorectal carcinomas, and you will have all the clinical features and also the um, um, hereditary features of Lynch syndrome. But still, you will not find any germline MMR mutations. So that is Lynch like syndrome. Neither will you find any sporadic mutations. Okay, so if you do not find any germline mutations, there are still chances that sporadic mutations may result in loss of MLH1 and BMS2 expression. So the last step is to go ahead and do a sporadic mutation testing in all of the four genes after germline mutation have come out to be negative. So this is the basic protocol which is followed. As far as MMR deficiency is concerned, Lynch-like syndrome, 52%, I already told you that in Lynch-like syndrome, uh, all the clinical features will be there, but no mutation will be identified either in germline or in sporadic areas. But some genetic mutation is there which we are not able to uh, quantify yet. 48% of the cases, what we might see is a germline MMR mutation which correlates very well with Lynch syndrome. The other 47% of the rest of the cases, what we are going to see is MLH1 hypermethylation which again correlates with a sporadic tumor. Okay. So what is MLH1 hypermethylation? First of all, from our general pathology, we have to know that hypermethylation, whenever there is DNA methylation, whenever there is DNA methylation, the genome is going to be, genome will not be transcribed. Okay. So DNA methylation will decrease transcription. Okay. Or protein synthesis. So MLH1 protein will not be produced when MLH1 is methylated. So where does this methylation happen? These methylation happen in CPG islands. So the significance of CPG islands is CPG islands are usually present in the promoter regions. Promoter region is when is the initiator region which initiates protein formation. So when there is methylation in CPG, CPG islands of MLH1 a gene, what happens is the promoter hypermethylation is there which will lead to suppression of the promoter region which will lead to decreased protein synthesis. So when you do not have MLH1 protein, what do you get in return? Mismatch. Repair is not happening properly. So microsatellite instable tumors are formed and this pathway happens in a sporadic case. Okay. So this is about DNA methylation and uh, hypermethylation of MLH1 and remember this is associated with sporadic uh, tumors, sporadic microsatellite unstable tumors. So we ha I have a few cases over here. So you can see here that this MLH1 expression is lost. You do not have any MLH1 expression here. And the MSH2 is intact. Okay, so this is negative. This is positive. This is again positive and PMS2 is negative. Okay, and you can see in the surrounding stroma that these cells show positivity. So we have to identify um, the expression in the tumor cells and not the stromal cells. Stromal cells can be used as an internal control. So in this, this case, you can see that MLH1 is positive, no, sorry, negative and PMS2 is negative. So what is the next best step? The next best step is to do a BRAF 600D mutational analysis. V600E. Okay, so this is the next best step according to the um, algorithm we just discussed. So there's another case here where you can see MLH1 is intact. PMS2 is also intact. You can see this say, in the tumor cells. Okay. MSH2, however, is lost. MSH2 is lost and MSH6 is lost. So what should be done in such cases? So in such cases, what should be done next is germline testing for MMR. Okay, germline testing for the MMR proteins, particularly MSH2 and MSH6, to see if they are lost. PCR is a good method to test. So why, what is the significance of identifying all these things? The significance of identifying all these things is that MMR deficient colorectal carcinomas are associated with high grade morphology, mucinous differentiation and most importantly lymphocytic infiltrate surrounding the tumor which means that there is an immunogenic state but because of some reason this immunogenicity is not being put into effect. 
and even more importantly these tumors can be treated with pdl1 therapy okay as you can see here these are uh, this is an example of mmr uh, uh, deficient tumors where you can see these these tumor cells have a pretty much solid morphology we know solid morphology correlates with a higher grade and then here we can see that there are so many uh, lymphocytes surrounding the tumor so when pdl1 therapy is given a better response is there in these patients so let's just wrap with a few multiple choice questions which of the following is a key advantage of pcr based msi testing over ihc testing okay so uh, directly visualizes protein expression detects frame shift mutations identifies epigenetic silencing or is it faster and cheaper so as far as pcr is concerned pcr detects frame shift mutations in coding regions of microsatellites okay so these mutations may or may not express in ihc but frame shift mutations may uh, pcr may detect these so in that way it's better than ihc and next one which of these is most characteristic of microsatellite instability tumors abc mutation are not associated with msi tumors as we discussed msi high tumors they have if it's sporadic if they are sporadic they'll have braf mutation right sided location is correct okay so left sided tumors are usually apc associated tumors okay keras mutation mutated tumors are also usually uh, left sided tumors so the answer is right sided location of the tumor okay so that's it thank you so much for listening